うですね、まあ、何度か乗りましたけど、まずあのね、すごくこうダウンタウンの中心にあって、えーまあ、初めて行った時は、少しその光景に驚きましたね。はい、あの久しぶりに、えー、出場できるので、非常に楽しみにしてますし、2度目の優勝を狙ってます、頑張ります。December the 5th, then the big nights at Happy Valley. Stars from all around the world coming. Zach, as last year's winners confirmed, Karis will be there for Hong Kong. Vincent Ho, the local rider. So it's either Matthew Poon, Douglas White, Chad Schofield. Yeah, and a lot, of spot. Yeah, a lot uh, resting on uh, what happens at Happy Valley on Wednesday night. No, it'll be a fabulous night, Andrew. It always is. It's always a brilliant lead up towards what uh, ends up being a, a memorable weekend. And uh, great to have so many riders from around the way. Javier Castellano. Castellano. Looking forward to seeing uh, him in action. Especially around Happy Valley for the first time with some of these uh, yeah. jockeys. We've seen a few of them struggle from overseas in the earlier races. They've obviously picked up pretty quickly because they're top-class riders. Mm. But, uh, look, um, some great names there, and it's going to be always a good night. Yeah, mm. it'll always be um, a night to remember, no doubt. Certainly will be. castellano has been here before, but Colin Keane, champion jockey from Ireland, he yeah. is in mm. Hong Kong for the first time. So we're looking forward to welcome Colin to the ranks as well. One more race to go, though, on Wednesday night. The final event, Class 3 over the 1,200 uh, metres. Headed by Seven Heavens, drops into Class 3 for the first time. Starlight, a lifestyle course and distance winner, which was his sixth here at Happy Valley. Wonderful journey gets the wide gate. Cheeky B, eighth on debut behind Powermax. Most beautiful, is two from three so far this season. Telecom Brothers, roll forward last time out. He's got Barrier 8, Chad Schofield in the saddle there. Iron Boy behind Starlight last time out. Gets a decent turnaround at the weight, so Salto Olimpico. His only win has been here at the Valley. It was over the 1,800 metres. This is 12. Most beautiful has been up at Chung Fa. It's done him well as well with uh, two wins so far um, this season. Now we're uh, at the touch screen, obviously, to have a look at the uh, the speed map here for the uh, the final event. Where does it come from, Brett? Mm. Seems to be a bit of competition for the lead. Yeah, there's a variety of speed options here, Andrew. In our final race, Strathclyde, who's better known as a dirt horse, potentially could kick through. Speed Vision has been a horse that's shown a lot of pace. Most beautiful is a little bit of a question mark. He can potentially go four, but some of his runs this season have been coming from sort of back in the field. Maybe the option with Seven's Heaven, the heavyweight might be to roll forward and he can sort of head, end up there. Um, Telecom Brothers did lead last start. I don't think you want to sit there. So he might potentially roll forward as well if Seven's Heaven goes back and put some pressure on here. So good, good to fast possibly. But, uh, yeah, quite a few variations possible, which makes the race uh, a little bit more complex. It certainly does. Uh, what clues do you have for us, Paul? Well, the first one we have a look at is this top weight, uh, Seven Heavens. Uh, you can see he's downgraded. He's going nicely enough here. J just a uh, wide draw was the uh, question mark for him, but everything else is looking good. He goes nicely here, and he's very keen in his morning track work. Uh, Beauty Loyal, another one that he's missed the start on occasions, Beauty Loyal. But from Barrier 1, Karis Teton... Uh, did ride him last start, so he does know the horse. Uh, he should get a nice run in transit, whatever happens with this all this pace. He should be able to sit behind it, but he's going nicely. And Strathclyde, no one that would be on the pace. You can just see him pushed out here in this uh, piece of work. He did uh, really respond nicely. More of an all-weather horse, but uh, mm. has run well on the turf before. All right, and so it may well be a pace influence as well. Uh, let's start our search for the winner with a horse that's done plenty of winning here at uh, Happy Valley, and that is uh, Starlight. Um, super effort from him last time as well. This was uh, during the, the day meeting. The other horse we've got to keep our eye on here is uh, Iron Boy, who had a pretty good run in transit. He'd been right round on the rail, but uh, just hooked out in the straight. It was a decent run. Francis Law's got Iron Boy going very well at the moment. Douglas White knows him better than anybody. 18th ride, he'll take on Iron Boy. And Starlight, he's in the right class. He's over the right course and distance. He has a lot more weight to carry, with Umberto Rispoli taking over from Victor Wong. But as I said, he's still in the right scenario. He is, yeah. He's just a little bit awkward from nine. But look, I've got him in the numbers because he's going so well. And I've mm. got Iron Boy in as well. So Same. I think he would have come up from that. So I've got them both in. Yeah, hard to ignore uh, those runs. Uh, most beautiful. Caught a few out, winning first up over 1,000 metres. Um, this is his last start. So it went over the 1,200. Yep, and they did ride him closer to the speed. Obviously, drawing barrier one, he was able to sit forward. And you can see why there's a few variables with the speed map. He's got that option is if he wants uh, to roll forward from the 10. But the two starts prior, he drew 11 and 8, and they actually went back, and he was able to charge on from the back 
and obviously win one and run fourth behind Keep Moving in the other. So he's going very well and he's tactical, tactically versatile at the moment. Yeah, he is. And he is a horse in form. He's just got to carry a little bit more weight. and uh, He's got that wide draw once again, but he's overcome it, as you mentioned already, Brett. Mm, yeah, barrier 10. He won from the inside gate the start before his other win came from barrier 11. So it's it possible. Yeah, I tend to think he looks uh, he looks better when he comes from the back, but um, most horses that flash home do. Right, Telecom Brothers. So again, a possible pace influence. Uh, was up on the speed last time out, but uh, more competition might make it harder this time. He's a nice horse, this guy. I don't mind him at all. Four-year-old by Schwarz here out of a General Nadia mare. So just bred for pace and speed. Showed a lot of tempo here early. Got tired late. Blitzing's been in enormous form. A couple of others running on uh, that have been going OK too. A good beauty snuck through underneath. Um, I thought that was a good run. He did a lot of work. I just don't know where he's going to end up from the eight. So he's one I'm going to put in the fridge for a later date. Yeah, I haven't got him in either. I just worried about that draw because he had the perfect draw there. As you said, he tired a bit late and he'll be a bit fitter, but still Barry 8 looks a bit he, awkward. He'll be winning in this class for me in the not-too-distant future. All right, so the draw looks a bit awkward for this horse as well. This is uh, Seven Heavens. We're going back to June of last year. Not included in this race, but worth pointing out as well, the horse that wins is Hot King Prawn. That's exactly the reason we're going back and having Aaron a look at it. should be going the other way as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. <laughs> You've been faultless too with your arrows. It's all gone out the window. Let's get rid it's of it. It's fallen apart. It's gone pear-shaped for him. Um, but, yeah, look, concentrating on Seven Heavens. As you mentioned, Hocking Prawn wins. He charges in. This really highlights his capability. This was in Class 2. He's now dropping into Class 3 for the first time. Wide barrier, top weight. And his two runs this season have been on the average side, but... Very capable, as you can see from that performance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At his best, if he were to bring this sort of form, mm. taking uh, ground off uh, an our Group 2 winner, looks pretty good, doesn't it? But he's got to do it, Paul, from uh, his uh, last two runs. What yeah, do you and I, I have been a little bit disappointed with his last two. And with that wide gate and the big weight, I've left him out, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I am going to go with the horse we haven't mentioned, <laughs> called uh, Zero Hedge. Uh, I've got him on top, uh, Zero Hedge. He's, whatever happens in this race, he should get the best run in transit, and uh, he looks really tough to beat, does uh, this horse, uh, Zero Hedge. So I'm going to put him on top uh, to beat. Uh, the, the next one is number six, which is uh, Beauty Loyal. Should get a nice run in transit as well. Star and then we mentioned Iron Boy and Starlight from that race. They're both going nicely. So I went three, six, uh, ten and two. I think Zero Hedge fourth up will get the best run. I've gone with him as well. He was uh, quite impressive last season, Zero Hedge, when... Able to win in fast time. He ran 1954, defeated Shanghai Master by two. He's had the three runs back, as Paul's mentioned now, through a wide barrier last start, draw much better here, gate five. Three on top from 10 Iron Boy, two Starlight, seven most beautiful. I do think it's a quality race, so because of that, I'll sort of use the three as the banker, and I will include Seventh Heaven in the trio because, you know, when you're running second to Hot King Prawn, it's hard to leave you out. Yeah, he goes in the numbers for me as well, Seven Heavens. But, uh, yeah, I'm with Zero Hedge as well. But if Sylvester Rhodes, the previous winner, that 850 might not exist by the time we get to, uh, to race time. Stats for the programme. Trainer analysis. Richard Gibson is the stable inform. Yeah, he's going all right at the moment with a 16 runners for three wins and a third there. 25% first three rate. And he's got a couple of good chances, uh, I thought, as well, to uh, increase... Um, um, the very consistent horses, Travel Ambassador uh, being one of them as well. There's... Um, He's got a couple of others, uh, as Richard Gibson, but uh, Kerry to win another one. Nordic Warrior, did you mention it? Nordic Warrior, so there's three of them that can easily be placed. All right. What about best? Uh, racing luck for me, race number seven. I just think he's his third up now, and his first two runs this season have been very, very good, and I think he's ready to win. So race seven, number nine. And Ty Smart, first uh, up this season, over 1650. Uh, I think he can get outside the leader if they want to, or he can run from the back. He's had a recent trial just to get him ready for this, so... Uh, he should be a big price. And the player of the day being in race seven, Mr. So-and-so, happy dragon and racing luck, QQP. You can't go too far wrong with that, Rick. It's a fill-up, you reckon, Paul. <laughs> um, for me, I'm going to go with Kaki. I thought his win was very solid last start. I think he can win again, 3-1. Chad Schofield, give himself a real shake mm. at being in the International Jockeys Championship. Clear choice, race number six at a bit of value. And then in race six, clear choice with super lucky and magic success, a QQP. So there'll be some value in that. All right, zero hedge for me in the last. Uh, I've got Sylvester down for three, but I'd be happy if zero hedge salutes. Race eight, number three. And Patriot Hero for Douglas White will be a big price in the feature. Race number five for David Ferraris. 
We'll work around Zero Hedge in the last one, three and ten. The QQP in race number eight. We are just about uh, done. Looking forward to Happy Valley and Chevalier Cup coming up on the weekend too. That's right. And on Wednesday night at the Valley, we'll get the selection announcement for International Day coming up on the 9th of December. Yeah, good racing on the, on the weekend. Definitely looking forward to that Chevalier Cup. Rise high. Simply... Brilliant amongst others, so looking forward to it. Yeah, Ratan for Richard Gibson yeah, Rat as well. But that's the show. Thanks for watching. On behalf of Paul Brett and the rest of the team, hopefully we'll see you at Happy Valley on Wednesday night when we will be racing to win. Good night. Good night.